His Morning Crew with Rob, Allison, and Jim. You may have heard about all the unrest right now in Haiti and how there are missionary teams that are stuck in Haiti right now. There is one we saw online, Woodland Community Church in Florida. The team of middle and high school students were stuck in Haiti and they posted on their Facebook page that they're okay and they were in a village like a few nights ago and this is how they decided to spend their time as they're stuck in Haiti. Spontaneously, they just started singing how great is our God in this one village. And I love what the uh, team leader said, Jeff, on their Facebook page. He said, we are marked by majesty. No darkness can stand against us. They were stuck. They couldn't even get into Port-au-Prince. It was such a story of them trying to get in there because that's where the airport is. The good news is they did make their way into the airport. They are there now, and hopefully later today, they'll be on the plane coming home to Florida where they are. Uh, We also heard word on our Facebook page that Mount Olivet Baptist in Hartwell, uh, they messaged us, and they are safe as far as in a compound, and hopefully that team from uh, Mount Olivet that uh, Baptist Church in Hartwell is going to fly home by Friday. And we got some good news from Shapin United Methodist Church. They had 13 students in Haiti. They landed at 7 o'clock last night in Atlanta to this. Yeah, that celebration. Parents are going and hugging their kids big time. They all hopped on the vehicles, and they got to the church last night in Shapin, just outside of Columbia, at 12.45 last night. I'm sure they are home, resting safe and sound right now. Those students are home. What a good reminder that there's no safer place to be than in God's will. I mean, Mm. he's going to keep them safe. There's no need to worry. And he has. And I think they were going to hear a lot of stories like that of a lot of missionary teams that are able to get out right now, which is good. Some are still stuck, but some are getting it over to the airport at Port-au-Prince. Yeah, those missions trips, they change you. Obviously, I've been on many. (laughs) You have? (laughs) Yeah. That's why I'm so wonderful now. Mm, We see. He is a life that is changed. Mm-hmm. Mornings with Rob, Allison, and Jim. I think I heard our producer Jim Mann's stomach growl, and that's probably why he's going to start talking about food again. It's never not growling, Rob. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one of my favorite go-to uh, meals is the old uh, peanut butter and jelly. You ever heard of that? Mm. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Or is that just something I do? Sounds yummy. It is. It is. And I have the recipe for that. <laughs> Uh, and, the, and the professional way of doing it is, you know, you take two slices of bread. Okay. And you put peanut butter on one of them, and you put jelly on the other one, and then you bring them together, and you have your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All right. Thanks for sharing. Mm-hmm. However, of course, it, <clears throat> you know, in between elections, they got to argue about something on twi- on Twitter. On Twitter. <laughs> 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 so someone said, hey, we're just trying to uh, settle a discussion. You know, do you put the uh, peanut butter on one side and the jelly on the other side, bring them together, like I just said, which is the true way of doing it? Yeah. Or do you put peanut butter down and then put jelly on top of the peanut butter and then bring the bread? It's craziness right there. <sighs> does it really matter? Apparently. Yeah, how does it affect the taste? Because I got to be honest, it never occurred to me to put one on peanut butter on one slice and jelly on the other. Whoa. I put the jelly on top Whoa. of the peanut butter. What? That's the way I've always done it. You're from the West Coast, aren't you? <laughs> mm. Well, no, it's wrong, of course. <laughs> but uh, this thing, I haven't checked recently. But back when, I mean, it was it was put on a few days ago, a week ago, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they had nine th- over 9,000 retweets and 245,000 likes. I mean, people are getting into this. Of course, you know, they're being, some are being humorous. Some get angry over anything. And that's something to be angry about. Allison, you did it wrong. I'll be show nice. you. I'll do it. <laughs> it's okay, Jim. It's okay. <laughs> Somebody put peanut butter on one and jelly on the other. It, and they keep it on the outside where your hands touch it. Is it safe to say that's your favorite go-to meal? Your little you quick want, thing that you get? Yeah, because I know how to make that. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently. I can't make anything else. That and hard-boiled eggs. Oh, I can do that. Well, yeah. How about you, Allison? Quick mm-hmm. go-to meal, is there one? Yeah, I like a salad. That is like, quick. It's yep. not quick. You just put it in a bowl. Take a handful dr- of lettuce. <laughs> boom. Pop it on there. Throw in some other stuff. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. My nine-year-old, Eli, likes hot dogs. Mm-hmm. 
I, I do it the quick way. Microwave. Yes, Zap for a it. minute. Do you poke <laughs> holes quick. in it so it doesn't explode? No, I've never what? had one explode on me. Holy but it, it sounds like Allie has a story about an exploding hot dog in her mic. <laughs> yeah, it's happened. Push up for five minutes. <laughs> Is that too long? Yeah, yeah kind of. <laughs> hey, how about your favorite go-to quick meal? Help us out here, or if you want to join the peanut butter jelly debate. <laughs> yeah. 800-447-7234. You can call our text right now. It's His Morning Crew on His Radio. Mornings with His Morning Crew. Jim started something over peanut butter and jelly. I mean, dude, it's it's all in the way that you make it. Yes, yes. Don't make me angry, Rob. <laughs> but it's obvious, since I'm a chef, that you just put peanut butter on one side, you put jelly on the other piece of bread, and you put them together. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, a debate has happened. The phones are lighting up. The texts are coming in at 800-447-7234. Amanda says, my husband Jason says you are all wrong what? with the sandwich. You put peanut butter on both slices of bread and then jelly in the middle. That way the jelly doesn't make the bread soggy. I can understand if you're packing it for lunches, it does get soggy with the jelly. But I eat it right away. That's a lot of peanut butter. What do you think? I guess you'd have to spread it thin. Oh, yes. Okay, so Janelle is, is, is joining us. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm wrong. The best way to do a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is to put your peanut butter in a bowl and add your jelly and stir it up really good and then put it on the bread. Have you gotten counseling for that? Jim, <laughs> Jim. Now that makes sense because everything would be evenly mixed together, you'd think, right? Right. That's, right. that's an extra step. You just have to try it, Jim. I don't know. Can you buy it like that in the store? Yes, actually. Um, I think it's called Goober's um, Peanut Butter and Jelly, and it's got like a line of jelly and a line of peanut butter all the way around the jar. And uh, you can just dip it and add it that way. Or um, just do the way I said, put it in a bowl and mix it together. Okay, who's willing to do that? Would you even do that, Allie? Yeah. You sure. would? Okay. I'm not willing. If Jim is not willing. <laughs> if it's changed, I'm, Jim's not I'm in old. whatsoever. Rob, Allison, and Jim. The tension on the way that the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are made is just it's extreme. I'm always going to stand up for what's right, though. Uh, yeah. Can you tell? Mm-hmm. And that's when you make your peanut butter and jelly, which I'm a chef, and what comes to this. You put peanut butter on one bread and jelly on the other slice. Boom, no, you don't. Yes, you do. See? let me. No. Oh, she's so angry. You put the peanut butter on, and then you get your jelly, and you kind of slide it on top of the peanut butter. Oh, so mm-hmm. messy. The people are speaking, by the way, and have spoken. The calls and texts are coming in over peanut butter and mm. jelly at 800-447-7234. Joseph is Team Allison. I put the jelly on top of the peanut butter as well. Becky. <laughs> says, Allison, no, it has to be one on each slice of bread. And then she left. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, so uh, Jesse is here. How about you, Jesse? Well, I have yet to hear anybody talk about grilling it like the grilled cheese sandwich. That <gasps> is um, a completely new experience. But make it just like a grilled cheese, but don't use butter on the bread. Put mayonnaise on it and grill it, and it will crisp better than butter ever did, and oh my goodness. Yep, but you have to put the jelly on one piece of bread and the peanut butter on the other, because that's just the way you do it. <laughs> Is the mayonnaise on the outside, where you're grilling mayonnaise it? Mayonnaise on the outside, just like you use butter, but use mayonnaise. And Interesting. It crisp it, a completely different flavor, and it'll be all ooey-gooey, melty in the middle. With a glass <laughs> of cold milk, that is a definite treat. Okay, another assignment for Allie. I don't want to try that. It does sound pretty good, doesn't it? I'm a little skeptical about the mayo part, but I'm willing to try. It even has my interest. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't like mayonnaise. <laughs> what? Wait. What? What? What's going on? We keep learning new stuff about this guy. Mornings with Rob, Allison, and Jim. Well, the debate has begun over peanut butter and jelly, but I think there's a change of direction here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Change of direction. I'll tell you why. Because Adam has a thought. What is it, Adam? What I have never understood is people putting cream and sugar in the coffee cup 
before putting coffee in it. And to me, I just don't understand that because I add a lot of creamer and I like to add creamer until the coffee is a certain color. And I can't do that unless there's coffee in the cup. Ah, see, I put my creamer in first because then I don't need a stir stick. Ah. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful learning things about each now. other? I use the same method that Allie does because I know exactly how much I want and it takes care of it. You don't have to mess up a spoon or anything. Ah, I, I guess I just never thought about that. I, I didn't know that it mixed so well if you did the creamer first. Yeah. I thought you still had to stir it. Broaden your horizons. Try something new. Ah, uh, I and think I'm still going to do it the way that I usually do it. <laughs> just because I don't exactly know how much I add. I just keep adding it until it's kind of a light brown. Adam, you're starting to sound like Jim Mann. <laughs> what? That's his honesty. Yeah, because you don't want to change either. If I pour cream in my mouth, then I drink coffee, and then I put a little sugar in there. That's the way it's supposed to be done. Yeah. His morning crew. Now, this story starts off a little scary, but stick with me because I promise it will be worth it. Two little boys, they were asleep in their beds in West Charlotte, and they were shot through a window. Mm. Nine-year-old Daryl and 11-year-old Jeremiah survived the shooting. And that terrible night actually brought someone incredibly special into their lives. Officer Caleb Costner, he responded to the shooting. And that's when he first met the boys. Then he kept coming back to check on them, see if they needed anything. And over the past six months, a very deep relationship has formed. He's not no officer no more. He's our stepdad. I was like, you can't. That's not your stepdad. He was, they was like, yes, he is. He said he's our stepdad because he's my hero and he show us love and support. I just went to that Fred Rogers documentary yesterday. And in the movie, he says, sometimes we need to struggle with a tragedy to feel the gravity of love. And I think that so fits the story because if it weren't for that tragedy, these people wouldn't be together now and have this relationship. Now, Officer Caleb, he recently gathered furniture donations because after going to the apartment for a while, he noticed, you know, the family's home was nearly empty. So he thought that's another way that I can help these people. That is amazing. Sometimes it does take a tragedy to pull people together like that. Mm -hmm. How God uses a moment just to make a connection. Yeah, there's good people out there, Rob. I keep trying to tell you. He didn't believe me. I think he knows. Oh. I'm in on it. Never mind. Thank you. <laughs> More than just pretty voices. Try it, buy it. What should you do? Why not ask his morning crew? It's a crew review. It's a crew review. It's a crew review. Dear his morning crew, it's summertime, which means time to sweat. Not my favorite thing to do, but it's even worse for those of us who wear glasses. All I do is push my glasses up all day long. Is there anything out there that will help a nerd like me? Glenda from Gastonia. Well, that's funny that you call yourself a nerd, Glenda, because uh, there is a product that claims to stop that slide. You may have seen this on Shark Tank. It's called Nerd Wax. And the inventor explains how he came up with the idea. I actually came up with the idea for Nerd Wax when I was a touring audio engineer. We used to do all kinds of shows outside in the summer when it was really hot. I'd get super sweaty and I would look down and my glasses would literally fall off of my face. It was kind of gross. It took me a while to get the formula right where I wanted, where it's a perfect balance of being tacky enough to hold up in the hot weather, but also not so tacky that it's gonna make a mess on your glasses. Is this a problem? I mean, you guys wear glasses yes. pretty regularly. Yes. It is? It okay. Is. I, I had no idea. I'm so sorry that you have to deal with Terrible. this. What a struggle. <laughs> Well, we're gonna try out this Nerd Wax. So what you do is, it's like a chapstick, a tube of chapstick, and you uh, uh, twist it up a little bit, and then use the side of the Nerd Wax on your glasses. I've got some awesome 
hashtag I am his, his radio sunglasses that I'm trying this out with. These are brand new. Is there a certain spot to put them on the glasses? On the bridge of the, the nose right part. Right on the nose part. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here, Jim. Hey, thank you. All right. So I've got some on my cool sunglasses. I'm going to try it out. So how are we going to have, don't we have to sweat or something to actually try them? Well, you should be able to tell if it's sticky I'm already or not. sweaty. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Oh, I think it feels pretty good. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's not Oops. earthquake proof, Rob. <laughs> it fell off already. I shook my head really hard to see if they'd fall off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it would work. Might haven't fallen off yet. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Would you be willing to try this? Of course, I do have the headset that's holding on my so, glasses. A <laughs> couple of things I'm concerned about. Can I be honest? Yes. No. One is it made these glasses real gooky in the nose bridge. Mm, maybe so, you put too much on. What a nerd. Yeah. Second is, I'm afraid that I might default and use this as chapstick. Well, it's funny that you say that. It's all organic ingredients, so it's not going to hurt you if you do that. But, yeah, it's not. What's it taste like? For that. Anybody willing to use it as chapstick to like give it a try? Grease. No. Okay. I mean, it's beeswax, coconut oil, peppermint oil. That's so chapstick right there. It's not bad for okay. you. Yeah. It's out. chapstick. He's selling chapstick for our nose. Okay. Well, if anybody else wants to try this out, you can actually win some nerd wax and a pair of his radio sunglasses. They also uh, come with these cool taco-shaped microfiber claws oh. so you can clean your sunnies. And uh, your sunnies sun, sunglasses. Ah, for those of you not in the know, but yeah, so head to the His Radio Instagram and you can enter to win this fun prize. Very easy to do. Follow us, tag some sun loving taco eating pal, and you just might win on our His Radio Instagram page. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down um, on the crew review. I'm on the fence. She's on the fence. Oh. I'll I'll give it. I'll just help. I'll give it a thumbs up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And Jim. Me too. Thumbs up. Okay. Well, you guys are what matters because you That's all true. wear glasses. We are what Thank matters. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Mark this day in history, will you? I hope we have that recorded. <laughs> what is called nerd wick. Oh, well. Wow. <laughs> Mornings with his morning crew. Love thy neighbor, I think, is a cool thing, especially communities that are getting together. There's that thing that they have in a library kind of box for free, but little free books, right? Or like a library. Uh huh. Little free library. We have one in our neighborhood. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty cool. There are other communities that are getting together to love neighbors by putting blessing boxes together where they have toilet paper, toiletries, and food and stuff like that in there. And there's one community and church that stepped out to do that very same thing. It's the Coastal Community Christian Church in Richmond Hill. They just put a blessing box in front of their church on Ford Road. And and, and here's their um, motto. I love it. Give what you can, take what you need. And so you get non-perishable food items in there, personal care items, and it's for free for anybody who needs it. Now, here's the cool thing. They just did an unveiling on Sunday of this. Got around in a circle, prayed around that blessing box. WSAV was there as well, and Pastor Park shared the heart behind the blessing box. Their thought is that if we give them their physical needs, it will help them to understand they also have spiritual needs as well. And so people who go in front of the church and they use that blessing box, they'll probably go, I wonder if there is really something to this Jesus. And I think the church will have an opportunity as as well as those in the community to share Jesus with people who are in need. Simple and practical and no hoops to jump through. You just put some stuff in, take some stuff out. Yeah, no paperwork to fill out and all that stuff. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. So they're they're like blessing people and not telling them what they're doing wrong? Right. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work. It's called love. What? Mm. (sighs) That's something. Rob, Allison, and Jim. Failing is not a disgrace unless you make it the last chapter of your book. A guy named Dave in California didn't want some guilt he'd been carrying around for more than 40 years to be the last chapter in his book. You see, back in the 70s, he got a parking ticket and he never paid it Uh until now. The fine back then was just $2, but he added $3 for interest and popped it into the mail to a police department where he got it and he included a little note. Dear PD, I've been carrying this ticket around for 40 plus years, always intending to pay. 
Forgive me if I don't give you my info. With respect, Dave. We do appreciate that this individual paid their ticket. And again, we encourage other individuals, if you have an outstanding ticket, please pay them. So Dave didn't give much other info except that he lives in California. We don't know his last name, don't know much about it. But this type of ticket would cost someone $20 today. So the <laughs> cost of inflation has increased. The chief said he'd like to track down Dave uh, just to say thank you and chat and hear his story. In like an interrogation room? No, <laughs> no, he's not in trouble anymore. Good. But isn't that funny? He was carrying that guilt around. He must have been. I mean, he kept the parking ticket. For this long? Yeah. 40 some odd years. Uh -huh. It should be easy to find him. I mean, how many Daves can there be in California, right? <laughs> Such a weird name. My first thought was how come his info's not on the ticket itself? Wouldn't you think it would be? Well, back in the 60s, they didn't keep very good records. <laughs> what? Oh. Way back then <laughs> in the 60s. Ancient times. There are dinosaurs around then, right? Uh -huh. I thought so. Mornings with Rob, Allison, and Jim. Today is a special day. The day many of us wait all year for. The chance to humiliate ourselves, to score free food. Yay. Woo! What? Oh. Yes, it's Cal Appreciation <laughs> Day at Chick-fil-A. It's the 14th year for this special holiday, and if you don't have your cow costume yet, don't panic. We can help. Now, we did get a text from Jacob earlier. Jacob says a great Chick-fil-A cow costume idea is they got baseball caps at the Dollar Tree and then cut black felt spots and put them on the hat, and he sent us a picture. It looks really cool. Awesome. There's also printables online, so you can print your costume, making it pretty easy. Or I got another idea. Uh -oh. You ready? You can get creative with a few simple supplies. So you'll need paper plates, scissors, and some construction paper. And I made a mistake, okay? I grabbed my son's thing of construction paper thinking they all have the same colors in them, but no, they don't. Oh, so no. I had to like improvise and use the back cardboard for part of it. And then they didn't have pink, so I had to use red and they didn't have black. So, oh, um, so, so what I did was I cut a little uh, chunk out of a paper plate and then I cut a couple of holes in it. <laughs> And the idea is that you will put this over your eyes, but I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to so show you So the chunk my... at the bottom is for your mouth to be exposed. Yeah. I'm a little embarrassed to show you my what happened? craft project. Well, let's see it. Go ahead. You're normally no reason to be okay. embarrassed. Okay. Well, look. It's, what uh, do you guys it's think? a hippo. <laughs> oh. It's, um, it's the missing I, It's it's uh, Hey, <laughs> it's the heart. It's some kind of a beast. It, yeah. Do you think? They'll give me free food for this, even though it doesn't really look like a cow. Um, <laughs> what are those things on its head? <laughs> supposed to be horns. Uh, wow. Um, you could always try and see if you'll score the free food today. How much grace will Chick Fil A you show me today? I don't know. <laughs> the nose is unique. It kind of um, looks like a pig. I wasn't. I, don't know. Yeah. I messed up. Somewhere I was not going to say that. <laughs> Thank you for not calling me a pig. Yeah, well, no, wait, what? It's more like an aardvark. <laughs>